Hi, I'm Tim Strait, and I'm going to tell you about my piece of Armenia. You know, in the year 1999, the Norwegian Refugee Council came to me. I was working for, for them in Oslo, Norway, and they said to me, we want you to become the country director of our organization in Armenia. And I said, that sounds very exciting. I went back to my office, back to my computer, and I said, oh my God, where's Armenia? I know nothing about Armenia. I literally had to go onto a computer and figure out where the heck Armenia is. So working with the Norwegian Refugee Council is what brought me here. But my engagement in Armenia has grown from just this narrow field of being a refugee expert and into a much broader belief in this country, belief in the future of this country, and really wanting to help this country move forward in any little way I can be helpful. Yes, September 4th, 2000. That means I've been here 19 years, which is pretty incredible. That's almost 33% of my entire life. And people say, why would you stay in Armenia that long? And I'm saying, well, it's, it's, it's not about, it's, it's, it's a tough life here sometimes. Moving to another country with another language, with another culture, and learning to know that culture, that's a, it's a very stressful thing sometimes. But when you come here, I came here, and I saw what the enormous potential of this country is. That's what has kept me here, is the potential of this country. And I've seen lots of bad habits, I've seen lots of problems and the corruption, and we know all about that, we know all about that. We want to get done with that, and we want to move on. And that's what I believe in, is from now, we can move forward and we can really develop a great country in this little Armenia. What I saw was I, I, I came in September, so that was very nice weather, and, but we headed right into the winter rather quickly when everything was new and interesting. And I was sick. The first year and a half, I had a bad stomach. It took me a year and a half to get my stomach used to the food here and the water here, and just the, the bacteria was just different from what I was used to. And so it was a rough first period. But what I didn't realize is that stupid me, I didn't realize that everyone here of course speaks Russian and I have a background in speaking Russian from university in the United States. Um, and, and so that really helped me to quickly jump into being able to communicate. And that has also been my handicap in terms of learning Armenian. Of course, after 19 years here, I understand quite a bit of Armenian, but I don't feel comfortable speaking it. And I will start almost every conversation here in Armenian, and after the first sentence, I fall back into the Russian, if they don't speak English. My, my, my first impression was, while this is different, while this is difficult, and it got really cold, and those first few winters were fairly rough here, and the asphalt wasn't here, the electricity wasn't here, there was no gas heating in the country at that time. Uh, we were past the heating of the apartments with car batteries period, which was the early years after the independence. Uh, but still, it was not a comfortable existence, I would say, but an extremely interesting one, an extremely challenging one, and I love a challenge. So that's what I remember from the first years. And then going out of Yerevan into the small villages where the Refugee Council was working, up in Tavush, or in Lori, and out in Ararat, small places with even less than what was available in, in Yerevan in terms of good roads or electricity and water and, and those, those issues. Um, so so it, for me, it's being able to see going from that that very basic start, a massive potential, but not a lot of comfort, and to where we are today, where yes, there's still a problem with jobs, yes, there's still a problem with lots of issues in this country, but we're seeing so many positive developments in the country. And we can talk about the revolution, but, but that is going to create the groundwork for, or the, the basis for really be beginning to grow. But even before the revolution, we were seeing incredible achievements in the IT industry. We were seeing incredible achievements in the wine industry. And now it's just, I can't keep track anymore. I can remember sitting with friends at one of the only decent cafes at the time in Armenia, 
uh, in front of what at the time was the Armenia Hotel, or Hotel Armenia, which is today the Marriott down on Heraparak on the, on the Republic Square. And we would get together in the evenings, good friends from the US and from the foreign ministry and from Canada and other places, and we would sit and discuss when are we going to reach the critical mass in Armenia for change? When is the number of projects going to reach the point where we don't n know each of the products, uh, projects intimately? When there's so many of them we can't keep track anymore. At the time we would sit and we would discuss the four good projects in the country. There's a development on this, there's an investment in that, and, but there were so few at the time and now Many of those friends, we sit around and we go, do you remember when we used to sit in front of the Marriott Hotel and talk about the four projects that were going on in Armenia? Because today, there is just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of great projects of all kinds, from civil society to investments in factories, to development projects, to recycling projects, to everything. It's just, it's just amazing what's going on. I can remember very early when I was working for the Refugee Council up in a small village in the very northern part of Tavush where we were building houses for, for um, uh, 49 families if I'm not mistaken. Pitchavan. Pitchavan was the name, yes. And when we had the opening ceremony, when we were delivering the keys to the families who were going to live in this and the Mars pet is there and the priest is there, everybody's there. I'm rather new, I'd been in the country like nine months or something, and we're all gathered and the speeches are made and everything and they bring out a sheep. And I thought, well, nice, I like sheep. And then they pull out a knife and slit its throat and the blood was everywhere and the sheep was dead. I was horrified, horrified. I'm not a vegetarian or anything, I do eat meat, but still this was unusual for me in my background and so that's I, I can remember thinking wow this culture is different from where I come from but for me that's a very Armenian thing and that's actually showing um, a high degree of respect and I just didn't understand it at the time however I, I have grown to love the food uh, so much meat I never ate in my life as when I came to Armenia the Horvats has become one of my staples but I have to say, since the Syrian Armenians started coming to Armenia, I have switched over more to their kitchen than to the, the local Armenian kitchen. I do love my Horvat still, the Jose Horvat is great, and I can taste the difference between the guy pig and the girl pig on the Jose Horvat because there is a distinct difference in taste. But I've changed more to the hummus and the lavash and the, and the, yeah, the shistauk and, and those kinds of things. Sepas is one of my favorites as well. And I eat such a variety of things here that I'm not always aware of whether that was an influence from the Soviet time or it's an influence from the Syrian time because the local Armenians are starting to serve the hummus and the, and the, the Syrians are starting to serve the... It's, it's getting all a little bit mixed up, but that's what I think is fascinating, is that these, these cultures, these Armenian cultures from different parts of the world are kind of meshing. And I can remember, I can remember when diasporans were coming to Armenia and having trouble being understood that they have different words and they say kisher pari instead of bari gisher and, 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 and all those differences between the east and west and some different words but now after there's been so much exposure there's been so much travel people from here traveling out and the people from there the diasporan communities in Lebanon the US Argentina wherever coming here the people are used now to hearing the different variations of Armenian language and being Armenian as well and with the food you eat so it's that I, I love what Armenia is becoming and I put a post on Facebook a couple of years ago it was not last summer it was the summer before I believe where I was walking on a warm lovely summer's night down the Cascade where I live and I heard three different kinds of Armenian at least east west something in the middle the Bashka High, the Lebanon High, and the local High, or whatever. And then I heard also the English, and the Spanish, and the Arabic, and all the other languages of the tourists that are here. And all of them were sitting at cafe tables up and down the Cascade. And, I, and I'm getting goosebumps now again, because it was, just, it was just like, we have arrived. We have arrived as a country. 
We, we are a place where people come, not because you, you have to be Armenian in order to come here, no. It's, it's, it's a place that's interesting for every kind of tourist to come and enjoy. And the Cascade is gorgeous, the, the, the Armenia is gorgeous, the nature, the, the, all the churches, the Sevan Lake, the, the, the cable car, the hiking, the climbing, the natural parks, the national parks, it's, there's just so much to offer here. The hang gliding, the, the zip lines, the, there's just so much going on and it, it's, it's going to get only better and better and better. And there's got to be more hotels out in the regions so that the people who come don't stay in Yerevan and go out during the day and come back to Yerevan, but they stay out in the regions. But that, that experience of walking down the Cascade with the beautiful lights and the music was playing and all the languages and everybody's laughing and having a fun time, mix of, 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 mix of Armenians, a mix of foreigners, a mix of races, religions, uh, heights, weights, languages, foods, everything. It's just an amazing culture here in this little place that lots of people still haven't heard of. So I still feel like we're this secret, we're this secret place that people can come and have this amazing time that they really didn't expect. They didn't expect the good wines, they didn't expect the incredible nature, they didn't expect to go on the world's longest zip line, they didn't expect to go on the world's longest cable car. It's just this little hidden place that more and more people are discovering so I'm, I'm a little bit afraid of too many people finding out, but at the same time we need, we need the dollars that they spend here at the hotels and in the restaurants and the tour agencies and so forth and so on. We need the business. And so I'm, I'm, it's, just, it's just incredible. If I can talk about another issue since the revolution, since the revolution, for me personally, who've been here for 19 years, so many of my friends that I know personally, and I've worked with them in civil society, I've worked with them, um, an example that I want to take is, is being from the Nordic countries, there's um, a young woman who was born here, who moved to Denmark when she was four years old, and I got to know her when she reached her 20s and she was at university in Denmark and she started coming to Armenia because she somehow wanted to engage in Armenia. She wasn't quite sure how to engage in Armenia. And 10 years later, she is now the head of the Civil Aviation Commission in Armenia, Tatevik, uh, Revazia. And, and that, for me that symbolizes. I have a dozen friends in parliament. I have a friend who's a minister. I have friend, lots of friends who are deputy ministers. I just, this for me, when I talked about the potential that this country has, when I see these young people, and they're not all that young, but some of them, you know, late 20s and up to mid 40s or something, when I see them coming into positions of authority and positions of decision making, strategizing for the future, what are we going to do about the mining issue? What are we going to do about the environment? What are we going to do about creating jobs? Then they are in positions of decision making. I'm so optimistic about the future of this, of, of this set, this generation of new, highly educated, highly intelligent, experienced international Armenians that are now working in this government. I don't think there was one day when I decided this is where I want to stay. I've always believed in the potential of this country. I have been very frustrated at times. Uh, when I didn't see the progress going on, when, when, when another election was messed up under the old regime, when the things were not going as fast as I felt they could go. And I tell the story quite often, when I arrived in 2000, I told myself, oh, five years in this country will be very well run because these people are really smart and hardworking and 2005 it should be fine. Then in 2005, I said, okay, 2010. And then in 2010, I said, okay, 2015 maybe. And, and just getting really frustrated. And there was one point in time, I have a group of friends that I have regular dinners with. Once a month we get together and we actually help each other cope with the situation when we get frustrated. And I said, I've had it, I'm leaving. That was probably in about 2012 or 13, if I'm not mistaken. 
And they all said, we understand, we don't like it, but we understand. I knew somewhere in my heart that I didn't mean it and that I didn't, didn't really want to leave because I do consider this my home. But there were bad days, really bad days. And so when I, when people ask me, since the revolution, has it, has it changed? And I, and I just feel like you can't imagine how much it's changed. You can't imagine. And it's not about the actual change, the physical change. It's about the belief that now we can really get to work and now we can really change this country and we can make this country so fantastic. And, and so it was a sliding decision with its ups and downs to stay. But for me, since 2003, four, there's never been a question of whether I wanted to stay here in Armenia. This is my home. Armenia is my home. I've been out of the country twice for two, three weeks at a time in the last two months. And, and, and going out and sitting in a warm country with palm trees and elephants and things is my way of coping. But this is my home and I, I want to come back. It's about, it's about the food, yes, but it's mostly about the friends, the network, the people I know that have my values, that share my vision for this country, that also are working hard to improve this country and, and get, it to, get it to realize all the potential that it has. So, so it's, it's about, I hate leaving, I hate getting on the plane because I want to keep working, but I know that physically I need to leave every once in a while in order to have the strength to carry on. And I think that's a perfectly human thing. I'm not Superman in any way. I know a lot of people in the same situation. I know a lot of people who leave sometimes for six months or a year in order to feel that they can come back and make the contribution that they want to do to this country. I represent Norway and Finland here in Armenia and when they say, so what's, what, why should I come to Armenia? And I say, because you haven't been here and because there's no beach, there's no beach in this country as you know it. It's not like the Grand Canary, it's not like, I don't know, wherever you go to the beach. It's a country of mountains and rivers and waterfalls and churches and all that other adventurous stuff that, that is here. It's nothing like you expect. And you can have amazing wines and beers and entertainment for a fourth of what you would spend in Norway or Finland or Sweden or Denmark or Europe generally. And so uh, it's just, it, it has so much to offer and the, the hospitality, that, that Armenian hospitality that actually can be kind of aggressive sometimes, but I've gotten so used to it, I've become a part of it, an aggressive hospitality where you're going to eat more, you're going to drink more, you're going to enjoy this, you're going to, uh, and now I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing exactly the same thing. The, the hospitality here, service is improving dramatically. But when you come to Armenia, you need to go to a village and you need to sit at a family table and you need to talk to them as equals and you need to accept their hospitality and you need to accept the fact that they will not let your vodka glass be empty and they will not let your plate be empty and you need to just go with it and enjoy it and have one of the most incredible experiences of your life. And it's not about big, huge anything. It's about the small things. It's about the little stories. It's about the individual people. It's about the grandma in the village and the kids and the, the horse. And the small stuff is what makes Armenia magical. I am not a person who goes to the opera. I am not a person who goes to the symphony orchestra. Um, I know people who do that and I encourage that and I really love people who, who, who attend those things. Um, I, don't, I don't do it. I enjoy the street music when I can walk here at the Cascade and I walk down to Haraparak and you go through four or five different concerts 
one's classic and one's jazz and one's modern and one's dance and whatever. And that's the culture, the street culture. That's what I love. And the people are out in the streets all summer long in this country. And they're, they're playing music and they're singing and they're dancing in the, in, in the streets. And I, I just can't get enough of that. You can see behind me the, the paintings. I think there's some amazing artists here. This is, this is one artist that I've collected for many, many years, Vrej Tamazian, here in Yerevan. And, and it, it, there's so much to offer here. And the Sarian Park, every Saturday and Sunday, 30 different artists exhibiting the, their artwork. You go down to the Vernissage and there's some artists there as well. Um, Armenian music. I've just learned that there is a jazz ensemble coming from Armenia going to Norway for one of the largest Norwegian jazz festivals this coming summer. Um, my point is not so much what I want to enjoy, but what we can encourage of cultural exchange between Finland and Armenia and Norway and Armenia. And I don't know if you know, but Finland will become the presidency in the European Union uh, in the second half of 2019. So I'm hoping that we're going to see quite a bit of Finnish culture coming here, but I also want to see the, the Armenian culture going there. So my job as the consul is to, is to encourage everything between Norway and Armenia and Finland and Armenia. Business, culture, exchange, study, whatever we can do to encourage the exchanges between the countries. That's my job to try to encourage it. If there's one thing that the Nordic countries are famous for, it's, it's the issue of human rights and acceptance of everyone. People are different. People are diverse and we need to accept it. Armenians are also different. They come in many sizes, shapes and forms and we need to accept that and we need to include them. And it's not a threat to your identity. It's not a threat to your culture. It's not a threat to your nation. And that's what I feel this government is also striving to, to promote is a softer approach to people who are different. And that I think is a very positive thing. And that's what we want to do from the Nordic side is to say, look, this is, this is how we do it. Um, the Nordic countries rate very high on the happiness scales, on the level of education scales, on the standard of living scales. And we assume and we hope that the Armenian people also want to enjoy that. And once the jobs are there, once there's food on the table and roof over your head and, and education for the children, for every Armenian in this country, I think those values that, I, I don't think they're necessarily European values, I think they're universal human values and they're human rights. So that for me is very important that we give, give Armenia, we show the Armenia, not forcing it on them, just saying, this is how we do it. If you want to learn more about it, visit our country or talk to our, 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 our people. So that for me is the most important thing that we can offer. But also practically, very practically, is for example, having a legal framework that allows business between the two countries go smoothly. And with this GSP system, I don't know if the viewers know what that is, but it's, it's making it easier and cheaper to import goods from Armenia into Norway and Finland. And Armenia has been uh, adopted by both Norway and Finland as a GSP plus country, one out of only 13 countries in the world that have the GSP plus status, which means if you export a product from Armenia to Norway or Finland, you pay zero tax entering those two countries. So the, the practical little things like that, technical, law, but lots of little things like that where we can encourage business between the two countries to create the jobs so that we have a softer society here. I want Armenia to be a place where everyone is welcome. I want a place where Armenia, everyone has a job. Everyone has a roof over their heads. Everyone has food on the table. Everybody has education for their children. They can travel. They engage in the international world. They're secure in who they are. They're secure in what Armenia is. They're secure in their language and their religion and their identity. That's, that's so important to be able to be comfortable as a nation with who you are, not feeling threatened by outside whatever it is. Um, 
it's, it's so important that I, I feel it's the jobs issue. In order to achieve this, being comfortable being Armenian in Armenia as a nation, that we create the jobs here. And so what I wish is a lot of job creation, so that all these other things fall into place in, in Armenia. And I'm so, so convinced that they will. Every time I see somebody gets a new job in IT, in the wine business, in an NGO, in the government, I just feel like, great, another family is secured. So this, it's happening. We just need to push it along. We need to engage and we need to push it forward.